What happens when you mix a criminal, a bay window, and some unfortunately long shoelaces? Well, instead of a criminal who turns a house upside down, you get, well, to our excitement and capers and cocktails, delight, a house that turns a criminal upside down. A short but sweet episode today of how one house got its revenge. Welcome to Capers and Cocktails, a true crime podcast that doesn't take itself too seriously and gives you something to enjoy while you listen. The following content may be disturbing to some. Discretion is advised. If you're enjoying one of our themed cocktails, ensure you're of legal drinking age and have fun, but drink responsibly. So when I googled upside down cocktail, the first couple that came up were homages to Stranger Things or a character from Stranger Things or something. Please do not judge me. I have not seen Stranger Things. Okay, so I decided to do a somewhat modified version of this drink where the main upside down element is that we're going to muddle fruit and then we will put whole fruit at the bottom of the drink and the top of the drink. No matter how you drink it, it's a right side up and upside down drink. So, okay, let's just do it. For our cocktail, we're going to take some blackberries and strawberries and muddle them at the bottom of our shaker. But that means to smoosh them. To that, we will add some ice and two parts tequila, one part simple syrup, one part vermouth rosso, and a half a part lime juice. We'll shake that, shake, 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 shake. Then we will pour into a glass. Don't strain this time. Add some of those berries to the top and enjoy. For our mocktail, we will muddle the blackberries and strawberries at the bottom of the shaker. Then we will add ice, two parts of our non-alcoholic tequila, one part grape juice, and a half a part lime juice. Then we will shake, 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 and pour into a glass, not straining this time, adding some more of that fresh fruit and drinking it and loving it. Do not recommend drinking this upside down. <sighs> Sorry. Anyway, enjoy the upside down drinking as you listen to an upside down tale. I think it's safe to say that it was not John Pierce's day. That's how a lot of these episodes start, it seems. On August 14th, 2008, John, a career criminal who had very recently been released on bail for some other offenses, decided that he was going to rob a house. That would be his first bad decision in a series of bad decisions that he would make that day. He decided to rob a house in the middle of the day. Oh, there's bad decision number two. He was walking past a Victorian terrace home on Fulwich Road in Dartford, a town in the northwest corner of Kent, England, when he noticed that the window was slightly open. He went to a nearby hardware store and stole a hammer. He came back to the house and knocked on the door. After he was satisfied that no one was home, he went to go into that window, but somehow, I don't understand how, it closed on his foot and he was left hanging upside down. He took the hammer and smashed the front window in an attempt to escape. That house was owned by 44-year-old Paul Ives and 32-year-old Angela Glowen. It was a balmy 65 degrees outside and winds at about 7 miles per hour from the southwest. So I guess the weather was nice and it wasn't too windy. Okay. Maybe I figured it out. I think the window was swinging out and then he stepped on the sill and the window, but I still cannot figure out how he ended up upside down. But somehow he got caught by his shoe and ended up hanging like a pinata in the front window of this house in the middle of the day. John would be left hanging upside down in the window frame for more than an hour as a crowd of 30 neighbors, strangers, and passersby gathered to watch him struggle. The closest explanation I could find was that the lace in his tennis shoe got caught in the window frame as he was trying to get into the house. Again, do not understand how that means upside down. Maybe if you're from England or you know how windows work in England, you can comment below because I truly don't get it, but it doesn't really matter. He ended up upside down. One of the neighbors, a 44-year-old Mr. Ives would say, the man must be the world's dumbest thief. He was hanging upside down. His body was inside the house and he was stuck in the window with his foot outside. The more he struggled, the more he got jammed. When I got home, he still had the hammer in his hand, which he used to smash the main window and get some leverage. He was screaming to get him down and we were all saying, I don't think so. <laughs> he kept saying, I haven't done anything. I was stopping the burglars. These neighbors definitely took pictures, but they definitely did not help him free himself. 
When homeowner Paul arrived home from work, John, having an hour upside down to think, had developed his story even further. He declared that he, John, had actually spotted someone else trying to rob the house and he had taken his trusty hammer and tried to catch the thief. But somehow, again, this is never explained, got caught upside down in the picture window. Somehow, this wasn't a convincing story. Paul, instead of setting him free, called the authorities. Police and paramedics shortly arrived on the scene and released John's shoe and got him down. They detained him, slapping the handcuffs on his wrist and took him to the station. The following day in front of the magistrates, James Pierce would fully admit that he was indeed attempting to burglarize Paul and Angela's Victorian Terrace home. During his sentencing on September 5th, 2008, John would ask to be sent to drug rehab for a chronic heroin addiction. The judge would say that he was not a good risk for drug treatment and instead would sentence him to three years in prison. This was probably also due in part to him admitting possessing class C drugs, as well as admitting two charges of assaulting police officers and shoplifting. As if the upside down humiliation wasn't enough, the judge who sentenced John Pierce would label him as pathetic, saying, I described it as pathetic, and indeed it was, dangling from a window as you attempted to get in. The victim would have found it very frightening. I don't know what happened to John Pierce after his prison sentence, but I hope he got the help he needed for his drug problem, and I hope he's doing okay now. If you can believe it, this is not the only case of a criminal being caught upside down. In March of 2017, a man tried to break into a room on a school campus in Tucson, Arizona, but when spooked by an on-duty locksmith, he ran. However, while he was trying to hop the fence, his baggy pants got caught on one of the spikes, leaving him hanging upside down on the other side, bearing his underwear to the world. He actually smiled for this photo that I'm showing YouTube viewers. In 2018, another wannabe criminal pantsed himself on a spiked fence after raiding a grocery store for beer in Belgium. In July of 2019, a homeowner in Salina, Kansas, found a burglar yelling for help in his basement after he'd strapped himself to an inversion table and couldn't get himself undone. That upside down burglar would be charged with aggravated burglary for stealing some cranberry juice. And in England in 2013, another clumsy burglar was left dangling face first in the rim of a toilet bowl after his feet got stuck in a bathroom window. I don't even wanna know the physics of that one. Thanks for hanging out with me. Do yourself a favor and don't rob a house. Do me a favor and make a comment on this episode and tell me how it's possible that John got caught upside down in that window frame. Like my brain exploded trying to figure it out and I still, I, I don't understand. I need your help. Speaking of comments, also go ahead and like this episode while you're at it and leave a review on your favorite podcast listening app. Next week is a skipped week. So in two weeks, we're headed to the Vatican for our drink and our story. Go to the description box to get the ingredients for the drink. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, friend me on social media, and I'll love you forever. I'll see you in two weeks. And remember, there are always alternatives to getting caught red-footed as you hang upside down in a stranger's house.